welcome to the next stage of Tees Valley Combined Authority Welcome Back Program. A range of free webinars aimed at businesses in the cultural industries and visitor economy in the Tees Valley. Each webinar is completely free to access and has been designed to support you and your teams as you adjust to new ways of operating within the current climate today. We are delighted to have partnered with Tees Valley Company Orange Box Training Solutions to bring these bespoke sessions together in a novel way. Using the very best trainers in their respective field, each live stream session will be posted on the enjoyteesvalley.com website for delegates to revisit at any time or as a resort to signpost colleagues who may be missed the opportunity. Without further delay, let's get going with our third session. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Bridget Woodhead. I'm a mental health instructor. Um, and I'm going to go through um, some slides that I've been asked to put together for the next 60 minutes, 50, 60 minutes, depends on how we get on. Um, what I would like to ask is if you've got any questions, great. Love questions. But can we hold them to the end just because we're going to get through the session and then answer the questions then rather than flipping in and out of the, of the PowerPoint. Um, so I've kind of got an agenda to go with today and I, and I guess it's kind of my, my wish list. Uh, and my wish list has changed a couple of times and it changed last night again with uh, another one of Boris's chats on the television. Um, but what I would like to talk about is mental health, you know, our mental health, where's our mental health at the moment. Um, I want to talk about stress and how that leads into anxiety because of the current situation. Um, I'm going to talk about some coping mechanisms for you guys out there. Um, I'm also going to talk about some coping mechanisms that I use uh, and that I have used since, um, since February. Um, and looking at you know, the five ways to well-being, things we can do moving forward because times are changing constantly uh, and that feeds into our anxiety. So I want to talk a, a lot about that, um, our five ways to well-being. And also I want to end on um, mindfulness. Mindfulness might be something that you know a lot about and that's great. Um, if not, I'm going to take you through some different kinds of mindfulness so you can find which ones work for you because you know it's not one size fits all. Um, and then you can leave this session and go away and, and try some mindfulness, which would be great. Um, so as we go through the session, um, I don't know if, I, if I'm, I mean, I'm taking a shot in the dark. Yeah, you might have heard about COVID-19. Uh, so that will be coming up throughout throughout this session because it's something that we can't get away from. You know, it's there. It's it's feeding into everybody's mental health, anxiety and stress at the moment. Um, and lockdown has had a massive impact on people's mental health. So the pandemic itself has brought stress, um, anxiety, depression and grief to the lives of millions of people, you know. And this fallout, you know, the fallout from this, you know, come to the end remains to be seen, um, you know, which again has caused anxiety. So we know, you know, if you work in mental health like I do, and I do a lot of work in mental health, we know that mental health services were currently stretched before we went into the pandemic. So a lot of people are outsourcing um, and looking for their own ways to cope through these, through these difficult times. So um, the situation isn't hopeless, which is why we're here today, thankfully. Um, so we can take it in our own hands, we can put some strategies in place for us. You may already have your own strategies. You might be looking for other strategies, um, but we can get informed, we can learn, we can help others um, in the time that we have. So we're living in extraordinary times. You know, I've never been in this situation before. You guys haven't been in this situation before. You know, I say to my kids, you're living through history. This is you know, going to be something that's wrote about and talked about for years. But for us, it's the uncertainty of the coronavirus. Um, what does the pandemic mean for us as individuals? you know, communities, um, you know, economies across the globe. How do we manage our mental health during these, you know, uncertain times? And that's the big question, isn't it? Because that will vary for each and every one of us. How one person manages their mental well-being to how another person manages theirs. And what I'm going to give you and talk about is some very different versions um, of some things that I've tried and you, you might have a laugh about because laughing is brilliant for your mental health. Um, and some things, as I say, you might have already tried. 
If you're in the room, we could share that. If at the end you want to share some really good strategies that you're using at the moment, that would be great. And if you do want to ask any questions, um, if you could put them in the chat, and then um, Glenn, my lovely colleague, is going to read them out at the end. Um, I don't have the answers to all the questions. If you're going to ask me when does the pandemic end, I can't answer that, but I can ask you answer any questions on the slides that we've got. So as I said, mental health, that term, you know, when I often talk about mental health, it conjures up a lot of different things for people. Um, you know, if you see the term mental health, you read it in a magazine or you see it on a, on a ballard somewhere. You know, what does that term mean? But what does that term mean for you at this moment in time? So it's, it's classed as a state of well-being, you know, in which in every individual realizes, realizes their own worth and their own potential. You know, it, it's we're kind of on a continuum or a barometer to where our mental health is. You know, some days it might be really well, some days we might be struggling. Um, some days we might feel like we're dealing with normal stresses in life and other days, you know, we might feel that we just can't get through that day. Um, so it's about can we work productively and fruitfully and being able to contribute to our community, to our family, to our work life and, you know, kind of being, being in the here and now, I guess. Um, so I want to show you this slide on the mental health continuum. You may have seen this if you are a mental health first aider, because uh, I think it's very important. And I use this in a lot of courses that I do and teach in conversations I have with people. Um, because it gives us a good kind of visual of how our mental health changes and how it moves around. So when I said before, kind of a continuum or a barometer of where you are will fluctuate throughout you know, your day, your week depending on where you are. And there are lots of contributing factors to that, you know, your work life, your home life, your relationships, um, you know, and that, that word that begins with C, COVID, will also be a, a major contributing factor. So if you have a look at this slide, um, on the left-hand side, we have someone who has um, a diagnosed mental health condition, mental health illness, and on the right-hand side, we have somebody um, who has good mental health and good well-being at the moment with no diagnosis. So if we look in the top of the continuum and the top left hand side when you're looking at your screen, you should see that the quadrant that says a person who's experiencing a high level of mental well-being despite being diagnosed with a mental illness. So that person's coping well with the mental health, you know they may have medication to help them stay in that quadrant, they may have a lot of structured exercise, a lot of self-help strategies to keep them there, but they, you know, that they're well. In the right hand side, in the minimum illness side of the continuum, in the top right, you have a person who has a high level of mental well-being and who has no mental illness. Now, you know, I would touch wood if I could, you know, but for the grace of God, I sit in that, in that side of the quadrant at the moment, um, but there's nothing to say that, you know, I might witness something on the way home, I might get a phone call, something might have an impact on me that might take me from that quadrant. Just like it would do with somebody who's got a diagnosed mental health condition. They may receive some bad news or um, be involved in an accident or you know, receive that telephone call that we don't want and move down to the bottom of the quadrant. So if you're in the top, you're in recovery, it's a nice place to be. Now, we're up there, you know, we might have all just been getting on with our lives um, and that little thing, COVID, might have come along and all of a sudden, you know, we have to self-isolate. People have never self-isolated before, we've never had to. Um, you know, all of a sudden we can't go and touch and hug and, and meet family members, and you know, which has been very difficult. Very difficult for people where, by doing those things, it's helping them stay mentally well. Now all of a sudden we can't do that. So then what do we put in place to help us stay up in that continuum? Um, because we can move down to the bottom of the continuum where we can become unwell in each of the quadrants. So if you have a diagnosed mental health condition, something occurs in your life, you know, that has an impact on you, then you more, may move to the bottom left, where you become a person who still has a diagnosis, but you may be struggling. You know, so you might not be sleeping properly, you might be irritable, um, you might be sleeping too much, you might not be eating enough, you might be eating too much. You know, the signs and symptoms would be very unique to you. If you're on the right-hand side and you're a person who doesn't have a diagnosis and you are mentally well at the moment, 
but then something topples you from the top or you know you have a bit of a wobble and you move down to the bottom then you become a person who has no diagnosis um, of mental illness but you have a low uh, level of mental well-being so again just like the person on the left hand side although you don't have a diagnosis you may be having problems sleeping um, you might be irritable um, your mood changes you know we might be up one minute down the next so these are all the things that we take into consideration when we look at this continuum. Now, I bring the mental health continuum in because our, men our mental health fluctuates without COVID, without those restrictions. You know, um, some people go to work to keep them mentally well. So all of a sudden, we're, told we're not able to go to work and we have to self-isolate in our homes. And a lot of people have struggled with that as well. So we will have moved even more so around this continuum than we would have done prior uh, to the pandemic. Um, and I can speak, you know, I can say with my hand on my heart that I, I have been a person where I was in the top right hand corner prior to COVID um, and have moved down to the bottom right. So I want you to have a look at that. Um, and so just to give you a couple of minutes to look at that mental health continuum, I guess, and have a look and think about Okay, so where was my mental health kind of last week? Where was my mental health the week before, last month, pre-COVID? Um, you know, and just find out where you sit. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy if anybody, you know, wants to put in the chat any examples they've got of that, um, of how they've moved around the continuum and then maybe it's moved back up to a positive place uh, where you are mentally well and what strategies you've used. Um, because one of the factors for that as well from moving from the top of the continuum is something else you might have heard of um, stress um, stress is something I find that we were quite open to talk about um, you know it's one of those things that you know we're all going to experience some kind of stress at some time in our life and it's a word that people use uh, when they're describing how the demands of their life have been too great for them to cope with and you know throughout my daily life and the work that I do I'm finding a lot of people actually at the moment are finding this environment really really difficult and kind of claustrophobic and worrying which is then generating further stress for them and what I want you to think about is where was your stress before COVID and where is your stress now you know what, what did you have a high level of stress before then and it, is, it, is it kind of a lot higher than it was um, because we're going to identify how stress affects us and it will affect us all very differently in different ways um, so you know at some time in our life there are different you know, we might have long-term stress uh, which will have a, an impact on our health um, and for many of us we find ways to gain control over that so a lot of the time it's about how do we find strategies with our well-being to help us manage the stress and anxiety rather than the stress and anxiety managing us I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying to explain um, so have you ever felt a time like this when you felt just so stressed that you know you, you feel like your head's going to explode everything's coming at you at one time um, you feel like there's no way out um, you know some sources of stress which again you can put in the chat at, at the end if you want to share I kind of I've, I've, I've added some on the, on the PowerPoint that I thought hmm what would have added to people's stress after we got that call to say right we're on lockdown um, that's on top of everything else that we already had. So homeschooling, you know, how many of you have been doing homeschooling and all of a sudden you're a teacher? Um, the pressures of that, you know, I know when my sons were bringing mass homework home, I just didn't have a clue. So, I mean, sometimes I think myself lucky that I didn't have to go through homeschooling, but I know a lot of my friends have had huge stress around that. Um, you know, were you furloughed for a period of time? How did that feel, you know, being at home? Um, when knowing that other people were going to work, do I have a job to go back to? You know, will that job still be there? Um, is a huge, you know, stress for a lot of people. And then another word that I've uh, yeah, abandoned about quite frequently now is re-entry anxiety. So anxiety about returning back to work after we've been on lockdown or furloughed, and also what's work going to look like? You know, how the system's going to work? How do we interact with each other? Um, and you know another source of stress and anxiety that I put on there was facing the future because our futures are very different now when we're looking at you know do we plan a holiday do we move house do we change job do we stay where we are 
Um, we know unemployment's rising, we just need to you know, turn the news on for that. So that is something, again, that sits in the back of our mind, which is, is adding to our well-being or maybe is holding us back um, to stay mentally well. So there are, you guys will know what, what you feel like when you're stressed. And the signs and symptoms, as I said, would be very different. Some short-term symptoms may be, um, you know, some people may sweat or they may have an uh, upset, upset stomach and dry mouth. You know, I've often heard the stomach called the second brain. Um, for some people, it could be, you know, headaches, that stress, tension headache around the top of the head, migraines, um, constantly feeling, you know, run down, fatigued. You may be short-tempered and angry. Uh, you might be a little bit snappy. As my husband calls it, the crocodile effect. Uh, we're just snapping a little bit. Muscle tension, because when we when we're stressed, we do tense up. So it could be aches and pains around the you know the top of the neck, down the back. Um, some possible psychological signs may be irritability, loss of temper, overanalyzing things. You know, sometimes when we're stressed, our brain is full of um, cortisol, and we overanalyze things. And forty-seven percent of the time we're actually thinking about something else that we should be focused on. And we do, you know, we are doing wonderful things during these times. Um, and irrational, is, is, you know, is another one that I've put on there. We could, you know, some more psychological signs could be magnifying problems, you know, blowing things out of proportion. Whereas beforehand, you might have seen that problem and thought, all right, well, we can do this, that, and the other. Whereas now you're overanalyzing it and thinking about it more and waking up thinking about it. It's in your mind all day, sitting in the back here. Um, lack of concentration. You know, how many times have you gone into a room and thought, why am I in this room? Oh, I drove home from work and thought, how did I get here? You know, what, how did, how did, did I go through a red light? Um, you may be one of these people who begin to withdraw mentally. So you become very isolated. Um, so you don't tend to, you know, if you get the chance, go out and meet family and friends or, or ring family and friends or Zoom, uh, as we should be saying now. Um, you may have mood swings, so your mood swings may fluctuate where some days you may feel really flat or you may feel like you've got a blue day or some days you may feel, you know, really happy. So a lot of different things within that, but as well as that, the frequent complaints of being tired and aches and pains and, and things like that. Um, you know, sometimes people will go towards using alcohol and drugs um, to help them with those symptoms. You know, I know uh, at the beginning of lockdown, there was a lot of reports around, you know, people were using more alcohol. Um, well, first of all, we didn't have to get up for work, which was one thing. Um, but, you know, some people are going to that more so as a coping strategy to help them relax. Um, some people have also, because of experiencing so much stress and anxiety and worry, um, have been developing panic attacks, which might be something that they, you know, have never had beforehand, or it might be somebody who, you know, has been diagnosed with panic attacks, panic disorder, and the panic attacks have started to increase during this period of time because of the restrictions. Um, appetite changes, you know, I've heard people talking about the COVID stone, and, but then I've also heard people who've lost weight um, during COVID because they've put lots of exercise strategies and well-being in place um, and have lots of time to do that now. Um, so again, it's very unique to you, but I want to show you this, this when we talk about people, you know, maybe putting on extra pounds as I have through, through the, the pandemic. Um, stress backwards spells desserts. So, you know, I have been kind of allowing myself that extra cream cake or that extra packet of crisps, um, which I think is appropriate because it says on the PowerPoint that we're allowed. That's fine. Um, but I would like you to just spend the next couple of minutes. I don't know if you've got pen or paper or um, if you just want to mentally make yourself a list. of You know, we talk about stress buckets and we talk about stress containers. Um, you know, it's all for me. There's lots of YouTube footage on, on these these two um, ways of looking at stress. If you're a mental health first data, you'll be aware of the stress container that, that people use within that course. But I want you to think about right now, today, it's what, five to four? What's in your bucket at the minute? What stress do you have in your bucket? And how much of your bucket is that stress taken up? You know, sometimes we have lots of layers of many little things. And then other times it could just be one thing that's filling that bucket right to the brim. 
So have a think. Is there anything in that bucket that you could mind, maybe, you know, anything that's just sitting here that you've got control over that you can kind of manage it and get rid of it? Try and get some space in that bucket. I often say it's, it's like doing a, um, a spring clean. You know, for some people being able to empty their bucket, they just need to draw a list. This is what needs to be done. You know, this is what's in my bucket. This is what I need to change. What can I change? Okay, I can change that. This is what I need to do. It's taken out of the bucket. This bit I can't change, but it's not happened to happen until six months time. So I'm going to park it. I put it open over there. A little bit more space in the bucket. Because with our buckets, you know, we kind of, before COVID, life was 100 miles an hour. You know, stress is out there. Our lives are so quick, so fast. Everything's, you know, everybody wants everything instantly. Um, gone are the days when you have to get up and turn your television over. You know, gone are the days when you, you would go look for a phone box to ring a friend. Um, gone are the days, thankfully, of dial-up internet. Can you imagine where we'd be today without, without the internet that we have? Um, so lots of little things are in our buckets. So let's try and make a little bit space in that bucket. Because often, when we're stressed, as I said before, and our brain's full of all this mental chatter, we don't know when our little bucket's sometimes at the top and it's got no space left. So we can't stretch it, you know, we can't make it bigger to fit more stuff in. Our bucket's kind of there, and it knows, and it will let you know when it's had enough. You know, that's when we start to feel the things like short temper. That's when maybe psoriasis breaks out. That's when maybe eczema starts to break out, you know, when normally you've had it under control. Or maybe you're not sleeping properly, you are becoming irritable. You know, that crocodile effect, as I said before. That's our body's way of saying, hang on a minute, you know, I'm feeling this. But a lot of the time, because we're so stressed, we tend not to look and listen to those signs because we don't have time. Whereas we have time, we have time now. So let's look at that. You know, on the re-entry to going back to work, going back to our lives, to whatever our lives will look like, you know, have some space in that bucket. Try and have, give it, have a spring clean so that you have some time so that if, if some changes do occur, and, you know, shot in the dark, I think there will be a lot of changes, you know, in our lives, in our work lives, in the way we work, then we have enough space in our bucket to be able to absorb that change. Okay? We want to be able to absorb it rather than our big bucket being so full that that one change that we add in makes our little bucket explode. So it's about having control over that. And to help reduce our uh, stress bucket and bring a lot of our stress down, we need to do things to keep us mentally well. And that also helps to reduce the bucket. So by you being able to identify what's in it, making a list and changing it that way, then you can also do other strategies that we're gonna talk about in a moment that will give your brain a rest from all that mental chatter to be able to do that, okay? Um, I also wanted to show you this. Again, it might be something that you've seen, and I look at it, I think 1977, you know. Zublin and Spring developed this stress uh, adversity vulnerability model. Um, you can get, you know, if you want a copy of this, you, you know, you can get a copy of the slides or there's a copy of this on YouTube. Um, but in 1977, what they said was, and I, and I, I do love this because they said, the more stress that you're experiencing, then the more, like, more vulnerable you become to, be, to being ill. Um, and when I look at the stress we have now in this current day, compared to the stress that they had in 1977, which would be very different, and they had stress all the same, but where's our stress? You know, sometimes when I speak to people, their little buckets are so full that actually they're working on empty. It's like trying to drink from an empty cup. So we need to get that balance, you know. Before COVID, did you have that work-life balance? That good, you know, nice little sections of work, life and play. Did you have that? Do you have it now? Do you have a balance now? You know, or have you found that when you're at home, you're working more hours at home than you would be at work? Um, so again, those are, these are little things that we need to think about um, and address. Resilience plays a part in relation to our mental health and our stress and um, the coronavirus pandemic has taught us a lot about resilience. Um, it's taught us a lot about um, the unpredictable world that we live in and how at the moment I think it feels a little bit like, for me, it feels like trying to shovel snow and it's still snowing. 
because although I make plans and the plans change and then you know other things change and I'm sure you're the same um, so you know almost overnight our way of life's changed and in the context in the context of work we've learned that really we can't be flexible actually I mean I'm stood here in front of a camera doing this session for you which is something in a million years I never thought I would do so a lot of people are pushing their boundaries and working outside of their comfort zones um, to make things work and hopefully you'll take some you know, little strategies away from this session to help you in, in your work life and your home life. Um, you know, a lot of us are having to learn IT, um, something that, you know, for me, four months ago, I didn't even know what Zoom was. So, I, you know, I'm wondering if you guys, if you knew what Zoom was or uh, Microsoft Teams, all these lovely words that I can find around now because I'm feeling a bit confident because somebody else is at the helm. Um, so all these tools open up possibilities and have made our work and practices more inclusive. Uh, and help us to keep in touch with people. So what I thought would be useful is I'm going to share some of my strategies um, that I've, that's kind of kept me in the top right hand corner of the continuum throughout these past few months. Um, now at the start of Covid I did find that um, I, I did struggle a little bit so I did think, think okay, okay Bridget you need to be having a reasonable uh, go to bed time and get out of bed time. That was something that I learned very quickly on because if I if I sleep too long, I know it affects my mood and I become groggy and you know I'm not ready for the day. Um, having structure in my day was another uh, positive that I had to quickly uh, make because I found I was floating a lot from day to day, and then the days become weeks, and then I was kind of okay. Then we're all on lockdown now, so then that means I don't need to really get ready. Um, but then if, I, if you don't get ready, then the next day runs into the next day. Um, so again, structured my day, um, I have my time to get up, I have my time, you know, when I do my work, I have my home time. Um, but I've also got some little strategies that I use as well, and you might, you might find them useful, you may not. I have put, a, um, I have a green dot, which is about that big, uh, on my computer at home, and I have one on the kettle in the um, kitchen. Because when I have a when I have a break, it's just me. So what I tend to do is uh, when I'm at home and I'm on my own and I and I work on a lot on the computer, I forget to get up and walk away. Um, and sometimes I could have been sitting for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, and I've realised I haven't walked away from the screen. So I've put this dot on my computer so that every now and again when I glance to it, it reminds me to bridge. Just push your chair away, look out the window, go and have a walk downstairs. You know, walk outside. Uh, hang some washing out, just do something different to looking at that computer, breaking those thoughts, having a break. Um, and the one on the kettle is so that when I do go downstairs and make myself a cup of tea and I look and I catch my eye on the kettle, it's about taking that minute to just stop. I just ground myself, take a breath, I listen to the kettle boiling and I make myself a cup of tea. That's my time, just for me, nobody else, just to gather my thoughts and then get ready for what I have to do next, because I'm structured. Um, I did have something else to show you as well, but unfortunately I lost it yesterday. On my key ring, um, I have a tiny, it's about that big, it's a tiny little spirit level. Uh, you can get them on Amazon, they're 99 pence, and you're probably wondering why I'm carrying a spirit level around with me. My spirit level is my stress indicator and I use it at times when I'm feeling very stressed or anxious. Because if you're experiencing too much stress, it feeds into anxiety. Now, if I'm going to a situation or I'm about to start a difficult Zoom call or um, you know, a, a team's training or something like that and I'm a little bit anxious about it, I get my little spirit level out and I look at it. And if you look at a spirit level, you've got to concentrate for a period of time to get the little bubble in the middle. Now, for those of you who do mindfulness will know what I'm talking about. What's happening is, I'm focusing on that bubble, on that spirit level, which is stopping all that mental chatter going on in my brain and grounding me for a moment to get me ready for what I've got to do next. And that strategy works for me. You know, you might think, I'm not buying a key ring with a spirit level on. That's fine. But pre-COVID, if I was going into um, meetings or I was outside a room and I knew I had to go into a room and I was going to be a little bit anxious, just get my little spirit level out, have a look at it, check what it's doing, off I go. 
Um, another one, another coping strategy that I have, which I, I've been doing a lot recently, is um, dancing in the kitchen. Dancing in the kitchen when nobody's watching, music's brilliant for your mental health. Uh, it's like a drug, isn't it? Music can bring you up or it can bring you down, depending on what you listen to. So in between my breaks, when I've checked out, you know, I've took time away from my computer, I'll turn my music on, have a little bit dance, do what I like, nobody can see, um, you know, do a little bit. You don't want to see me dancing anyway, I'll, I'll just take that thought away. Um, but also during COVID, even though I had some a lot of self-help strategies in place, businesses were changing, my work was changing, um, relationships were changing, and I did feel that actually I was losing my spark a little bit, and I did feel that I needed to speak to somebody about it. Now we know that face-to-face -face counselling hasn't been available, um, counselling isn't a, an option that I've used in the past but I've always recommended it, to, you know I think it's a good option for people to use and I felt I needed to speak to Anita intermediately, I didn't want to speak to family who I, I needed to speak to somebody um, and let them know what I was experiencing and, and to make sense of it and you know it really helped, it really worked well and I, would, I wouldn't, wouldn't think twice about doing it again. And so they're my coping strategies, you can tell me some of your strategies in the chat. Um, if you want to, that would be interesting. Um, so it's all about looking after our well-being. That's why we're here today. Because throughout the corona pandemic, um, many of us have been open to you know what we know and what we can cope with and what we can't. But there are so many things that we can control and there are a lot of things that we can't. Okay? The news is changing you know, every day. Um, so what can we do about it? We can't, you know, we can't change the news. We can't change that it's, you know, every time we put the news on, it's all figures and stats and, you know, we can do this and we can do that. Um, but we can adopt different styles of coping and thinking. Yeah, we can say, okay then, this is on the news, but I'm only going to watch the news once a day. I don't have to watch the news all day long to, and, you know, find out every single detail that's going on. I need to, I need to know certain things and I'm going to watch it at this time. Um, social skills can be developed just as any other skill, you know. If you, if you haven't used Zoom before, and this is your first time, great. Try and do Zoom bingo with your family. Or, you know, meet up with your friends over Zoom and do chat. Um, or FaceTime, you know, all these kind of things. We need to make the effort to stay in touch. Um, we also need to try to reduce the amount of stress that we find ourselves in as well. So thinking about that stress bucket and what you've got going on and what can you change. Um, I would say, I, I was, I, I don't know about you, but in the beginning I watched, I read every article. I watched the news every day, you know, I, I taped the news when I, when I couldn't watch it if I was training and I would just become quite obsessed with it. Um, so try to avoid some of the scaremongering articles that are online. Um, it's good to keep informed but you shouldn't let it disturb your peace either. You know, have the right time and right place for it and then when it's not, switch it off. Um, instead of spending you know, hours scrolling through the internet, spend some time doing things that bring you joy, things that you enjoy. Um, Post-lockdown is a great way to think about the balance in your life now in general, as I said before. Um, it's a perfect time to think about how you can make your life better. So, be positive. I'm not a positive thinker. So this is, you know, this is something I struggle with and I've, I've really put myself out there during, during uh, this pandemic. Focus on the positive things. You know, what's happening now? If you can, write down a couple of things, three things if you can, each day that's, that's positive, that's happened to you. Something you're proud of, you know? Because, you know, every now and again, we should stop what we're doing, tap ourselves on the shoulder and say, do you know what? I'm not doing a bad job. I'm moving. You know, I'm moving with these times. I'm doing this, I'm changing that, I'm online, I'm offline, I'm, you know, be proud of yourself. Everybody's in the same position, it's not just you. Um, set yourself challenges and goals will help build your confidence as well. Do something different. You know, sign up for an online course. Something you've wanted to do for a long time but never felt you had the time. Let's do it. You know, this in turn, it'll help you, you know, challenge yourself, learn new things. And by doing that, you're reducing your stress and actually you might make friends as well. You know, I, I, every day is a school day for me. I love learning new things. I thrive on that. Um, what you could also do is make a, um, a list of hope. 
So use this time to think about, and I've done this as well, I've, I've made a list and I'm going to keep this list forever. Um, use this time to think about all the things that you've missed. So what are you missing the most? Um, and think about it. And most importantly, things you took for granted. You know, all those things you took for granted and just flippantly, uh, you know, make a list of them, write them down. So when, you know, we do go back to normal, watch the says, you know, maybe six months time after Christmas, you know, um, then you can readdress them and look forward to them when this crisis is over. Gives you something to aim for, doesn't it? Looking forward. Um, so I want to talk about the five ways to well-being. You may have heard about the five ways to well-being. Um, I want you to do, if you can, at least one of these every day. Two, if you're feeling really positive. Three would be amazing. Um, but if you want to put that on your to-do list, like I do, um, if you are concerned and you do have a problem, you know, who can you share it with? Who, who can you connect with? A friend, family member, um, a colleague maybe. You know, we all have to check in on each other at the moment because we're doing a lot of this little Zoom and little Teams photographs, you know. How can you check in that your colleagues and friends are all right? Can you tell over Zoom and Teams? You know, can you pick up the phone and just say, how are you doing? I'm thinking about you. Um, do you mind if we have a chat? You know, you can both get a cup of coffee and sit down. Um, is there a neighbour you can talk to? Think of the people um, that are the most important people in your life who you have relationships uh, with that are good for your mental health and spend a lot of time with them, talking to them, sharing experiences. So that's connect with somebody. Or even a neighbour, somebody in the street, you know, who might be even more socially isolated. You know, can you, can you catch up with them and have a chat? Um, we have, I know I, during um, the lockdown, I got to know some neighbours I'd not met before when we were all coming out and clapping on an evening. Um, and we've all kept in touch, which is great. Be active is number two, okay? Go for a walk or a run. Go outside, the weather's changing. The leaves are changing colour, have you noticed? You know, sometimes the seasons change and we don't even notice. Um, I was getting in the car yesterday and there was this beautiful brown leaf on the ground. I stopped to look at it. Would I have done that beforehand? I don't think so. I would have been in a hurry. Get in the car, do this. Um, so yeah, look at the seasons. Walk your dog, do exercise. Um, a lot of people are doing exercise in their living rooms. Living rooms are gyms now for some people. Exercise won't make the stress disappear but it will reduce some of the emotional uh, intensity that you're feeling. So it'll help you clear your thoughts, okay? It helps you to uh, deal with more of the stress than you would have done. Exercise makes us feel good. We release lovely hormones uh, when we exercise. Serotonin being one of them, which is the happy hormone, which makes us smile. Um, and we, we produce that by laughing as well. Um, number three, look at all the things around you, as I said before. Check out the seasons, take notice. Even if you're working from home, take that time, as I said, push away from your computer. Go downstairs or upstairs, wherever that may be, in the garage. You know, make sure you take a lunch break. Um, often when I'm training in the classroom and I'll say to people, how many of you take a lunch break? It's not many people put their hand up. You know, a lot of people are working through lunches or sitting at their computers and, and having lunch. And actually, you're not enjoying your lunch. And I don't know about you guys, but I have done that. And if I do it... 20 minutes later, I'm thinking, have I had my lunch? Because I haven't took the time out to enjoy it. You've made your lunch, enjoy it. Um, I've even, you know, I've been sat working on the dining room table, and then when I make my lunch, this is going to sound really bizarre, I'll actually go to the other side of the dining room table to have my lunch, so it feels like I've stepped away from the office. Um, all these little things work for me. Um, thinking about things you enjoy seeing and doing will help you think about what matters to you, okay? Um, number four, now's the time. Learn something new. Knitting, crochet, you know, do a jigsaw, do a course. Orange Box has got loads of courses if you want to get in touch with them. You know, the list is extensive. Learn new skills, um, as well as having fun and making friends. That's what it's all about. We're all there to look after each other. Um, and finally, give. There was a lot of giving going on in lockdown. You know, we were cooking for other people, we were checking on people, we were doing shopping for other people. Um, and that's still happening. You know, thanks someone. I find it's really difficult at the moment when people are wearing masks because even though you are smiling and acknowledging, um, people are only seeing the eyes. So, you know, it, it's sometimes difficult when a shop assistant's helping you out. 
let them know. Thank you very much. You know, you may not see me smiling, but I am grateful for what you've done. Um, and that will make their day as well. Are you a doer or are you a thinker? So managing your stress, are you one of these people who think about it? So, mm, yeah, I know what I have to do. It's all sat here. And then you procrastinise a little bit. Mm, right, I could do that aiming over there. Um, or I could do this with that. Or are you a doer? Right, this is my list. This is my bucket. I'm going to do this, that and the other. And I'm going to get it all sorted out. Okay, which are you? Are you a thinker or a doer? That would be interesting to know. Uh, I'm a bit of a thinker. I'll think, I'll analyse, I'll procrastinise, and then when I start to get on my own nerves, I'll then do something about it. Um, finally, I couldn't talk about stress and anxiety and mental health without talking about mindfulness. Um, now, mindfulness might be something that you have lots of knowledge about, and that's great. Um, but I think it's very important because it's a good way of reducing stress and anxiety. And mindfulness has been around for forever. You know, it's not something that's just been developed and you don't have to do it at a certain time or day. Um, it's an awareness that emerges through paying attention to one thing on purpose. That's all it is. You know, it's about being in the present moment, being in the here and now. Because very often we are always looking forward. We're always thinking, what's happening next? What are we doing tomorrow? You know. What we're having for tea? What we're doing after tea? You know, what would you do? Um, we're never focusing on the here and now, you know, and that's why it's called the present, because it's a gift, and you've probably heard that, but we don't focus enough on it. We're always thinking about being detracted a bit of other things. Um, so that's all mindfulness is. It's about being non-judgmental and thinking about where you are at that moment. It means paying attention to things um, that are really here, uh, and not what you think about those things. And there are many different ways you can do that. So through mindfulness, you can discover um, how to live in the present moment in an enjoyable way, rather than worrying about the past or being concerned about the future. Okay, we're just focusing on the here and now. Um, so how does it work? So mindfulness, it's being defined as a moment to moment awareness. So one person's experience without judgment. So you focus on one thing, um, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? Um, and that might sound really easy to do, but it's not. Um, so by doing that, by focusing on that one thing, you're reducing um, all of that mental chatter and you're giving your brain just a little bit of a rest. You know, even if you do it for one minute, two minutes, three minutes. You know, I, I started using mindfulness two years ago and I'm up to about 30 minutes now. Uh, which is great for me because I'm a grasshopper thinker. My brain just dots around from one thing to another to another. Um, so if you can manage mindfulness, it reduces the symptoms of anxiety and depression. It improves your concentration. I mean, come on, that's brilliant, isn't it? Anybody who's menopausal living through a pandemic, it helps your concentration. And a number of interpersonal benefits. So like any skill, becoming more mindful takes practice. Okay, We need to practice at it. It's been recommended by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence um, as a way to prevent depression in people who've had three or more bouts of depression in the past because of the increased dopamine release. Um, so there are a couple of things on here. There's a few slides uh, that I'm going to just jump because I think, you know, I want to talk to you about it and I've got enough time to do it. If you have 10 minutes, okay, just 10 minutes, that's all. You know, a lot of people go, for you lucky if I get 10 minutes. 10 minutes, that's all I'm asking. Research shows taking 10 of the 1,440,000 minutes a day of mindfulness exercise can assist in improving your focus and reducing your stress. Okay, so a 10 minute walk or a 10 minute conversation with a friend is great, but if you can just shut your brain down for those 10 minutes, even better. We have 60,000 thoughts every single day. Okay, so it's good to take time away <clears throat> to work out what's important. What's important to you? Okay. It's easy to get bogged down with daily grind, but by practicing mindfulness, it can increase your life satisfaction. Mindfulness gives you the tools to assist in tackling the challenges that we face. Now, there are different kinds of mindfulness. There's mindfulness breathing, okay? Now, mindfulness breathing is a good one. I use this one all the time. It's just about being in the breath, focusing on the breath. How's the breath making you feel? 
If anybody has an Alexa, if you say to Alexa, Alexa, give me two minutes mindfulness, she'll talk you through mindfulness. If you just sit down, she'll talk you through what to do and what you know what you should be feeling and everything else. But actually with breathing, if you just sit down and think, close your eyes in a nice, you know, often I share this with you, I do in the bath. You know, I'm in the bath, I turn the lights out, focusing on my breathing, breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth. And all I'm thinking about is the breath in and the breath out. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to do when I get out of the bath, what am I doing after that, what's my tea, anything else, just on that. Okay, if you can do that for one minute or two minutes, and then the longer you can do it, the better. You know, it's like anything, it takes practice. Um, you may have tried mindfulness walking. So when you're walking, if you're out with the dogs or your partner, you know, how does it feel? How does the, the ground beneath your feet feel? How does your feel, feet feel in your shoes? Are you comfortable? How's your breathing when you're walking? You know, all these things we can focus on. We can even do a body scan at the same time. So a body scan is just about thinking, okay, go throughout your body, how does each bit feel? And I'm, I'm a lover of this one when I, if I'm having problems sleeping. So I lie and I think about my head, how's my head feeling? Where's my shoulders at? You know, how's my wrists and my fingers? How's my back? And going right down to my toes, because I'm thinking of each part of my body individually, it's stopping me thinking about anything else. Now, because as I said, I'm a grasshopper thinker, I might get down on my hips and start thinking about something else, but then I have to bring the thought back, yeah? So if, you, if your mind starts to wander and you start thinking about other things, just very gently bring it back and then start thinking about the job in hand, okay? If you think your, your brain's kind of like a snow globe, if you shake the snow globe, then you've got all these things going on. What we're trying to do is settle the snow globe so that our brain settles and actually, if you are having problems sleeping, you know, mindfulness is great, great for that. Mindful eating. You know, many of you will be rushing after, after, here, after here to go and have your tea. You know, if you're making your tea, you've bought, you've bought the items for the tea, you know what you're having, you're cooking it, sit down and enjoy it. You know, what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? You know, take your time chewing your food. What does it feel like in your mouth? All of these things are just tiny little strategies that you can use, as I said, to slow things down. And again, mindful yoga uh, is something that you may use as well. Um, if, you, if you want to do more mindfulness, if you go on uh, YouTube and I do it each day and I put in um, the daily calm and I get 10 minutes mindfulness every night on my phone when I'm in the bath um, or when I'm you know, sitting on the chair, which I find is really helpful. Uh, so there's no right or wrong way to do mindfulness, you know, it's not one size fits all. We all have our own, some people may prefer to do breathing, some people may prefer to do a body scan, it, you know, it's, it's very much down to you. You have to experiment, see what works, see what, you know, see if it has a calm in your life. Make a note of how do we feel now before you start mindfulness and actually in a week's time, has it worked? Do you have any benefits from it? Um, you know, we can't be lost in worry. We can't be lost in worry and anxiety and stress about things we, we can't change um, or in the past. We need to be more in the moment and, you know, having some space in those little buckets to manage any change that may come along. Another mindfulness activity is about, um, about is grounding yourself. So you, you stood, you're grounded and you're thinking, okay, what five things can I see? What four things can I feel right now? What three things can I hear? What two things can I smell? Um, can I taste anything? Yeah, that's a one that you can use. Um, mindfulness eating is, is a good one, which I use all the time, because obviously I love eating. Um, but I often use mindfulness as well, which is a good inner shower in the morning. You know, when, when you, you're getting ready, you're in the shower, you're getting ready, you're going to work, and bish bash wash you're out the door. Do you ever think about, you know, what did your shampoo smell like? What did the shower, what did the shower gel, gel smell of? You know, what did your body feel like when the water hit your skin? How long were you in the shower for? You know, all these little things we can, we can embrace. I uh, put in there in the PowerPoint as well, again, please, you know, take a lunch. Um, it helps with your eating, it helps to curb your weight gain and encourage you to have a healthier diet as well. 
Um, and according to the research from the University of Bristol, if you focus on what you're eating rather than checking your emails, you're less likely to snack later on, which is a win-win. Um, have a cup of tea. You know, have a cup of tea, put the kettle on, and when you've got the you know, cup of tea in your hands, savour that cup of tea. Drink it. What does it taste like? What does it feel like? You know, just taking those couple of minutes to help you think about something else. Um, rather than quickly, I'm going to go do something. Um, try and relax before bedtime. You know, is another good one. Switch off all your social media. Um, try and have, you know, I often have, I call it my blackout before I go to bed. Because I'm one of these people, if I see an email drop in or a text, I'm kind of, oh, will I, oh, not will I, will I. And then I'm left mulling it over all night. Um, so a little bit of mindfulness before you go to bed, you know, will help you relax and go to sleep. Um, so to end, I wanted to do a, a Buddha quote uh, that I, I picked up in my, in my lifetime. So the secret of health for the mind and body is not to mourn for the past, worry about the future or anticipate troubles, uh, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. So be Teflon to the negatives and Velcro to the positives. So grab a hold of them positives. You know, do what we can um, to get through the situation and then hopefully in six months' time we'll be having different conversations. And you'll still have trap strategies in place to help you even though we come out of the pandemic. Um, just a couple of apps that you can get on your phone that you're probably already aware of. There's the Karma, which is a brilliant app to help you relax. Um, it was voted best app 2017 which has relaxation strategies on there it has you know you can hear rain or wind or waves crashing up against the, the sea headspace is another good one buddyfy happy not perfect um daily calm on youtube as i said and also alexa are a few things that you can be getting on with if you feel that you are struggling and you feel you know i'm just i'm at my wits end really i, I could do with talking to somebody um, there is the option of um, Samaritans. Samaritans are available 24 hours a day. Um, there are also primary care services available if you ring your GP. They may be able to get you a session with a counsellor over Zoom. Um, if it's not so, uh, you know, a crisis situation, then we have MIND, we have Cruise Bereavement, which is another organisation uh, which has good results. Um, and if you thought CBT or cognitive behaviour therapy might be something I want to look at, then there's um, the more gym which you can access online as well. Um, and there's also if you care share, which may be an option to help you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have you got any questions? <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a good evening. <laughs>